entombed deep within ancient pyramids. Precious treasures are buried with their mummified owner. You see, the ancient Egyptians believed those treasures could be taken into the next life. You might even say they tried to bring along their... Accessories? Yeah, this video is all about two of the digestive system's accessory organs, the liver and gallbladder. So grab a shovel and let's start exploring. First up, the liver, a solid organ that sits just below the diaphragm in the upper right side of the abdomen. The liver has many functions. Ugh, so many functions. But here, we'll just focus on its role in digestion. It's represented here by this liver-shaped room. It looks like this room is enclosed by three layers of stone, which will help remind you of the germ layers of embryonic development. And notice we're surrounded by the innermost, or endostone layer, because the liver is derived from the endoderm, the innermost germ layer formed during fetal development. The endoderm also gives rise to the lining of the digestive tract and other accessory digestive organs, like the gallbladder and pancreas. Ugh. I didn't expect to enter an ancient tomb without encountering some kind of green ooze, but no lie, it's grosser than I anticipated. Eh, well, at least those drippy green stalactites will help us remember that one of the liver's functions is to make bile, a greenish digestive fluid that emulsifies fats in the small intestine. More on that in a bit. Bile is primarily produced by the chief functional cells of the liver called hepatocytes. Hepatocytes do a whole lot of other stuff too, but we're going to focus on bile here since these walls seem to be oozing a concerning amount of this green mystery sludge. With that, let's check out bile's three main components. Cholesterol, bilirubin, and bile salts. Ah, huh, someone certainly knows how to pack a gift basket. This offering's familiar arrangement of gold coins should remind you of the steroid backbone of cholesterol. Cholesterol is a sterol lipid produced in animal cells, and it's primarily excreted by the liver in bile. Mostly, the liver secretes cholesterol directly into bile, but some cholesterol is converted into bile salts, which become part of bile too. Either way, it ends up in bile, which is secreted into the small intestines, where some of it's reabsorbed, and some begins its long journey through the poop tubes and to the outside world. Even though these cholesterol coins shine a lovely golden hue, cholesterol itself is not the pigment that gives bile its appetizing yellowy-green color. For that, we need this impressive statue of a billy goat god. This yellowish billy goat idol represents bilirubin, the dominant pigment in bile. Bilirubin is a waste product produced when hemoglobin gets broken down during the recycling process of red blood cells. The problem is... High levels of bilirubin can be toxic. Jaundice is caused by elevated bilirubin in the blood. The liver gets rid of bilirubin by converting it to its water-soluble form and then secreting it in the bile. This process bilirubin ends up safely in the digestive tract and is excreted in the feces. All right, now let's move on to bile salts, the component in bile that actually plays a role in digestion. Bile salts are amphipathic steroid molecules, meaning they have a hydrophobic and hydrophilic region. The hydrophobic region interfaces with fat in the digestive lumen, while the hydrophilic region interacts with the intestine's watery environment, resulting in fat droplets sequestered into water-soluble structures called micelles. This process is known as emulsification, and it allows for large globs of dietary fat to be broken into small droplets so they can be absorbed in the small intestine. More on that in lipid biochemistry. In the meantime, take a look at this thoughtfully arranged offering of salt surrounding a central container of oil. Pretty reminiscent of bile salts surrounding small lipid droplets now, and kind of makes me want to eat something fried. Now that we know what's in bile, let's complete the picture by checking out where bile is stored and what triggers its release into the small intestine. You know, this is one of the things I love about secret places. They might be attached to even more secret places. And it looks like we found one that's highly reminiscent of a gallbladder. The gallbladder is a small hollow organ that sits just beneath the liver. Once bile is made in the liver, whatever isn't secreted directly into the small intestine is stored and concentrated in the gallbladder. 
which you can remember with these priceless gallbladder jars holding bilely green liquid. But it looks like we weren't the first to discover this ancient gallbladder-esque tomb. This cockroach is our recurring symbol for the digestive hormone cholecystokinin, or CCK. Cholecystokinin is a peptide hormone produced by endocrine cells of the small intestine, particularly in response to the presence of food in the lumen. Once released, CCK stimulates contraction of the gallbladder, which pushes out bile into the duodenum. That's why this six-legged vandal is kicking over a jar of bilely green ooze. Yeah, that's why. Just not just to make a mess I'll have to clean up later. One last thing. The gallbladder connects to a series of ducts called the biliary tree. The biliary tree includes the bile ducts in and out of the liver and the common bile duct that leads to the exocrine pancreas. If there's any sort of blockage in one of these ducts, it can cause problems with the liver, gallbladder, and even the pancreas. But right now, everything's still looking hunky-dory and not yet completely covered in green ooze. Let's check these rooms out one more time before I have to call for cleanup on aisle... Um, secret tomb? The liver is an accessory digestive organ that develops from the endoderm germ layer. The liver has a lot of important functions, but the one we focused on here is the production of bile, which is carried out by cells called hepatocytes. Bile is a digestive liquid that has three main components. Cholesterol, which is secreted into bile directly or in the form of bile salts, bilirubin, bile's primary pigment, and bile salts which mechanically digest lipids through emulsification. Once the liver makes bile, about half is stored and concentrated in the gallbladder. The hormone cholecystokinin, or CCK, triggers the gallbladder to contract and push bile into the small intestine when food is present. And that's about it for the digestive liver... Oh, I think I'm going to have to clean that up.